A properly configured smart home is great. It makes just about everything faster, easier, and even more efficient through automations. Unfortunately, mine isn't configured properly. Most notably, the fancy in-floor heating system that's supposed to be configured with these is not initialized at all. But Canadian winter's here, which is why my poor heat pump system is struggling to maintain room temperature. The only reason this one is even close to what it's set to is because the server room is no longer pumping heat outside, it's pumping heat out into the basement. I blame Jake, who assured me the whole thing was perfectly simple and it would be done well before winter came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very funny for you. But my kids have been going to bed with two or even three blankets at night because the upstairs is much colder than the downstairs. Are you just oh. trying to guilt trip me now? Thankfully, we have the solution just like we have this segue to our sponsor. Build Redux. Build Redux takes the challenge and hassle out of building your own PC. With pre-done configurations, support guides to aid you, and competitive pricing versus building a PC yourself, why not kick your feet up and let Build Redux handle it for you? Head to buildredux.com slash Linus and start your new build today. It pains me to say this, but Jake's not actually wrong. The system is pretty simple. The way this used to work was that each of these zones was wired up directly to one of those old school, like the mercury tilts and completes the circuit thermostats, which would activate it if it got too cold. It's really not that much more complicated. Our Ecobees are positioned strategically around the house in each of the heating zones that is fed by one of these pipes so that reports back the temperature instead of a little tilting mercury vial. Then, in order to actually activate that zone, we use one of these cool little relay boards. Basically what you're looking at right here is a Wi-Fi chipset and an antenna, power in, and then eight dry contacts here, each of which can activate one of our heating loops. These are running Tasmoda firmware, which is open source and super cool, and integrates perfectly with Home Assistant, da -da 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 -da, which is running on a virtual machine on this server right here. Home Assistant can also talk to our heat pump to ensure that the two systems aren't working against each other. And because the server is right here, physical hardware that I can touch and, and smell, none of these systems are reliant on sending data to the cloud or receiving data from the cloud in order to work once they're set up. But, but we're gonna do that now. Right? I don't remember what you said. <laughs> We're gonna fix it, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're definitely gonna fix it. <laughs> Realistically, this is the kind of thing I probably could have figured out on my own eventually, but as you can see, I was very busy mounting the shelf. You can fit so many cute little eaten duckies on here. They're gonna be happy those finally made it into a video. <laughs> they specifically asked for us to show them when we put the eaten UPS in the rack over there and we just totally didn't. <laughs> Tasmoda is great and all, but there is a little configuration involved. You might have actually not have been able to figure this out on your own. We need a few things first. Tasmoda devices use something called MQTT, which is an IoT messaging protocol. It's really lightweight. It's pretty cool, actually. But to run MQTT, you need something called a broker. It's kind of like a hub, a smart home hub, just a piece of software that actually facilitates the communication. Now, if you had like a commercial smart home, that would probably be your smart home hub. Yeah. But for something like Home Assistant, because it's infinitely configurable, <laughs> it's also infinitely easy to screw it up and miss a particular plugin yeah. or module. Definitely. So once we have it set up, we're gonna be using something called Mosquito, which is like one that's built into Home Assistant, really easy to run. Yeah, this is how I feel every time I come here. <laughs> it's really easy to set up. It's just in the add-on store. You can install it. Then we're going to install the MQTT integration, which is going to hook everything up. From there, you can add specific username and passwords for MQTT, uh -huh. or you no. can use Home Assistant existing users. Yeah. That's what we're going to use cool. just to make it easy. Okay, why don't we just do that? The last thing, Tasmoda. You add Tasmoda, and then it's going to see MQTT devices. Wait, you already did all of this? Did you like did screen it. cap it at least so no, that you can t show the people? I didn't. No. Okay, but you will later. Yeah, I will later, yeah. We still have a problem though. Remember those Ecobee thermostats I mentioned? Well, Ecobees do communicate through the cloud, and one of my requirements in setting up this system was that I didn't want to not be able to change anything about it if there was some kind of internet outage. So, how do we work around that? <laughs> Fortunately, 
Ecobees have a trick up their sleeve. Actually, for once, I'm gonna say thank you, Apple. They have HomeKit integration, which all runs locally. Now, we aren't using Apple devices, but Home Assistant has a kind of hacky way to connect to basically anything HomeKit. So we can use HomeKit protocol to connect to all of them locally, no cloud required. One thing I forgot to mention, now that we have the broker set up, we have to tell the Tasmoda devices where that broker is. So we have to set an IP address, a username and password, like I mentioned before. And once that's hooked up, it just finds it. It's like magic. And look, they're right there. Really? Yeah. So let's do a quick test. Why don't you press, uh, oh, you already pressed it. In Home Assistant. So look over there. Whoa! So hey, the living see, room's getting heat, baby. Watch um, right down here. You see how these ones move all the way over here? Ah, so that yeah, one, okay. it's open. Cool. You might be wondering how does the boiler work into all of this? Well, fortunately, these valves, you see they have four wires. Two of those go to a thermostat, which in our case is this guy, and the other two go to the boiler, and that's what triggers it. So when this valve opens, it physically like clicks a switch inside. That, that bridges those other two wires. Do you know how many times I've come down here and gone, boy, I sure wish this didn't say system idle on the front of this. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Watch this. Boom, boom. Oh, I love local connection stuff. Tell me about so it. So responsive. Anytime something goes through the cloud, you can feel it. Even a really great cloud connection. It's like, why? These devices are on the same network. This could be, literally fractions of a millisecond of latency. Now that all the valves are open and the boiler's on, we could verify that hot water is running by simply touching these. But this is Linus Tech Tips, and I've actually been meaning to talk about this super cool phone from Cat for a while uh, that I brought home to play with my kids. It has an integrated FLIR thermal camera, so we can actually see right here. There they are. They're all lit up. Hey, uh, Jake. What? Where was the return for these guys? Which ones? Ah, you can see the return is actually still quite cool, which means that the concrete in the floors hasn't really heated up yet. So that heat's being yeah, dissipated the, These outside. are returns down here too. I mean, these are closed. But these ones? That's the out. That's the hot side. Oh, I guess I can, I can validate that easily enough. <laughs> Obviously, I'm mostly just playing with this thing right now, but I'm sure you can see how this would be an invaluable tool for contractors. Say, for example, if you were trying to diagnose an overloaded circuit by finding a hot wire. Looks like everything here is in pretty good shape, so that's uh, definitely good to know. Does it find tools? Uh, find which now? Tools. Tools. Well, there's a big glowing yellow blob on it right now. That's why our Ecobees are hooked up in a bit of an unconventional way. If you check the manual, it says, oh, well, you need uh, four conductors for this kind of configuration and five wires for this. I mean, you can, you can have up to 10 freaking wires in this thing, but we've got only- Only two hooked two. up. Yeah. <laughs> this red one's not even real. It's fake. All we've got is power. And that's for an interesting reason. Now, conventionally, these would not hook up to those valves. They're just different kinds of systems. <laughs> so there's probably some way we could have hacked it or you know, had direct contacts to the, whatever. Either way, we're doing it over Wi-Fi. Now, the nice thing about Ecobees is we can plug this in and tell it, hey, you actually do have a heat wire connected. You actually do have a cooling wire connected, even though it doesn't detect it. I still remember how stoked you were when it was like, it was hidden in like a support article somewhere yeah. <laughs> or something yeah. like that. It's like, we found one, yes! So that means they can act as a thermostat and think they're connected to a, a boiler system of some sort, but they're actually not. And we still read the data off of it, so we still get the brain. He just thinks he's helping. Glorified thermostat. Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, it or, is a- Glorified thermometer, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what? There's a fancier version of these, the one that I have in my house, that has built-in occupancy detection. Shut up. <laughs> I think these ones, <laughs> they just released. I think this whole fiasco was so avoidable. So avoidable. Inavelli is working on a switch with like millimeter wave occupancy detection. There's also that cool product from one of my fellow YouTubers. Uh, I know you can't get their product on lttstore.com, but who knows, maybe someday, maybe we'd be interested in carrying it along with cool color block hoodies like the one I'm wearing. I'm a homeowner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It says only RC, so that would be the wire for cool. We'll go next. These are the wires that are detected and you go, ha, no, modify. <laughs> <laughs> we want that one. <laughs> Once an individual Ecobee is connected to Wi-Fi, we go over to Home Assistant and you can see it's already been discovered over HomeKit. 
Oh, so that's super cool. We just hit configure. It should pop up a HomeKit code here. No way. In a second. It's like, I swear to you, we had it working. It was working perfectly. I just did it and I was like, damn it, why did I do that? Buddy. I might need to restart it. Well, in the meantime, we could go do another one. Yeah, let's go do a different one. <laughs> do I need an iPhone to do these things? No, it just makes it way faster if you do it this way. If they just opened the standard for making things easy, or then everyone could use it. If when it's really not as easy and it's not working properly, there was obvious workarounds, that would be great. Okay, it's here. Let's see if we can do HomeKit now. Configure. Ah, there we go. That's it. Devices. VR so room. I could tell this thing, hey, yeah, you don't actually really need to do that. And I could set this guy to like, I don't know, what's a good room temperature? <sighs> like? So here's the thing. We do maybe still want some supplemental heat from your heat pump because the problem with in-floor heating is the run up and run down takes hours. Like maybe, I mean, this is a big slab, this could take like eight hours to, yeah. to cool off. So if you're trying to heat it to like 22, that's your ideal temperature, and you do it with your in-floor heating, you're gonna hit that, it's gonna shut off, but it's gonna keep heating up, right? And then it, it's like, oh, now it's too cold. So you kind of have to set a threshold that's like a, a bit lower. I mean, my understanding is you just set it and, and forget you it. never touch that's it That's what I mean. So we're gonna set yeah. it and then these are the ones you would touch if you wanna go a little bit hotter, a little just bit Just temporarily colder. or something. Yeah. So then, yeah, so then I should just set this guy to, I mean, you'd never wanna be lower than 19 inside. Mm -hmm. And if I just have this set to 22. I would, Actually, set, the, I would I set that one to 20. Now the Ecobee should compensate a bit. It's gonna learn the run up and run down mm -hmm. times. That will help. You definitely want to be careful. Why does the Ecobee think it's 23 and a half? So in that's because it's not. Yeah, that's another thing that's a little bit interesting. So you can have weird temperature readings if there's like, if we look behind here, if there's like an air gap and there's hot air blowing in there or something. Or if this stupid thing is heating, exhausting heat. Which it kind of is actually. Crap. Do you feel that? Yes, it's I warm. do. It's totally warm. Are they all like that? No. 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 They're all kind of different depending on how the studs were laid out and everything. I'm gonna go look. Uh, this one's even worse. Why is the small one so much hotter? Look, there's a silver lining here. It just means we get to make more content about oh, your house. I just want my heat to work. <laughs> okay, here, problem solved. I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Fortunately, the upstairs is mounted the other way around because this time, I'm gonna do it. So, uh, sorry, which one was it? So click modify. What is your ideal home temperature during the winter? Why is it in Fahrenheit? Just, just, who cares, just click next. But I don't know. Just, uh, 69, nice. No, like, so. That's probably what the temperature is in here. Yeah, 19, it's a little chilly in here. It's a little chilly in here. Okay. The wife doesn't like it. Honestly, it's fine for me. That's like I'd my like, ideal sleeping yeah, temperature. Same. I agree. But she is not stoked on it. She's got the extra blanket on her side of the bed. She's got the fuzzy PJs on and she's like, can't live with them, can't live without them. So how do I, uh, I don't want it to be a hold, I just want that to be like the temperature, right? So, oh, I gotta set a schedule. Yeah, it's way better to do this on your phone. Has it not found this one yet? No, but you know, multicast on Wi-Fi is a whole, whole other bag of worms, especially when you have multiple APs. You know, if you opted for the ruckus controller thing, we could probably configure multicast enhancement, but I don't think we can do it with Unleashed. Check oh, this what? out, Andy. It's totally working already. Does it feel? Not really. No, you're not gonna be able, no, you're a lot warmer than the floor is still. <laughs> but see that? You can see the in-floor lines. Man, I'm stoked. Why don't we try another one of these? Wanna show me how to do it? That would be pretty cool. Yeah, so I'm gonna make you a script that is one script that t takes all the inputs from all the thermostats, and then when it detects a change on any of them, it like, plums the input into the output, so it's just one script. But for now, let's just, we can just make one for each. We gotta select the climate device, which is boy, and then the attribute is HVAC action. That means what it's doing right now. So that'll either be a value of heating or idle. You could also have cooling if we had AC, but we don't. Yeah. So we're just gonna detect that it's changing at all. Well, we do, but it's, as a reminder, the AC must go through these American standard thermostats that I did not want because of their stupid proprietary communication protocol. American standard, more like American non-standard. Ah. Very annoying. 
because <laughs> realistically everything could go through this otherwise, especially because your stupid thermostats are heating up the Ecobees, <laughs> throwing off the temp sensor. Now we're gonna have to have separate temp sensors. Okay, we got a little script action here. So we have a choose action. So it's gonna choose between two conditions. First one, we're checking the trigger, which is the device that triggered this automation. Mm -hmm. It's HVAC action is heating. Okay. Then we're gonna switch turn on and we gotta set the entity ID to the switch of the Tasmoto device. Right, okay. And then we also have an option for if it's idle, and then we're gonna turn the switch off. This basically allows Home Assistant to take what the desired status of the Ecobee is. That is to say, if it thinks it should be heating or thinks it should not be heating, and then use that to trigger the relay on the Tasmoto device, which is gonna open the valve. There we go. It's working! Yes! If you go downstairs and I stay up here and I change the temperature below the heating threshold, mm -hmm. theoretically, that valve should go off. Yeah, okay, sure. Let's give it a shot. Actually, we're gonna go the other way around. I've got it okay, set to hold at 16 off. right now, and then I'm gonna set it to, I don't know, uh, 25. Sure. Theoretically, downstairs, Jake should see the valve open. Hey, Jake, did it work? Did he say he turned it on? Yeah. Hey, Jake! Hey, it worked! Did it work? It worked! Yes! Did you see it click on? Yeah. It worked! It's gonna open in a minute. Oh, I heard it. I heard it click. It's starting to open. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, I didn't bring the thermal camera with me, but... Or my phone. I left my phone open. Oh, all right, cool. Just like I left this segue to our sponsor. Squarespace. If you need to build a brand online, you need a website. But, but Linus, I just learned how to turn on the little flashlight on my phone. How am I gonna build a whole website, you ask? With Squarespace. Squarespace is a one-stop, no-frills, all-in-one platform for expanding your presence on the internet. Squarespace lets you build beautiful websites, engage with your audience, and sell anything and everything from products to content without needing to attend the Linus Techwart School of Tech Wizardry. We love Squarespace so much that we use it here at Linus Media Group. Its custom templates make it easy to stand out with a plethora of themes and customization options to fit your needs, and you can maximize your visibility thanks to their suite of integrated SEO features. There's also analytic insights to help you optimize for performance so you can see what's working well and what needs tweaking. So don't wait, get started today and head to squarespace.com forward slash LTT to get 10% off your first purchase. If you guys enjoyed this video, well, it's not so much about enjoyment or not, but you should definitely go check out the part where we laid out the plan because it had a fair bit more detail about what exactly is going on here. Yeah, and get subscribed because we're probably gonna have to move all those thermostats now. Yeah, I'm very unhappy right now. Okay. We might just have to get separate temperature sensors or something. I know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know.